Hi everyone, my name is Deepa Dalla and I'll be presenting about using artificial intelligence to democratize healthcare. So a little bit about me, I'm an incoming junior at the Liberal Arts and Science Academy from Austin, Texas. A few of my extracurriculars include developing COVID ML, which is um, something I'll be talking about a little later into this presentation. I'm also a research intern at UT Austin and John Hopkins. I'm the founder and president of Education Empower, which is a global nonprofit that works to empower underprivileged women across the world with financial, educational, and health-related support. Additionally, I participate in the first robotics challenge. In the future, I hope to go into a career focused on using the power of technology to create a better world for everyone. I wanna start my presentation with the statistic that more than half the world lacks access to essential health services, according to a report in 2017 by the World Health Organization and World Bank. This should just show us to address um, lack of healthcare and we need to make sure that we address this because this is a critical issue that is impacting people on a global scale. Artificial intelligence can help address this problem. So what is artificial intelligence? It's basically a that can simulate the human intelligence processes. It works very similar to how our brain processes information. AI algorithms can analyze data to give valuable insights or predictions. We have many examples of AI in our lives, whether that be facial recognition software, spam detection, voice assistants like Alexa and Google, or personalized ads. So how exactly can this technology impact in healthcare? Well, like I mentioned earlier, AI is really good when it comes to analyzing data to give valuable insights or predictions. Hence, AI can analyze medical data in order to provide a diagnosis, prognosis, or treatment solution in a fast, accessible, and efficient manner. Currently, AI is being used in healthcare in many different ways. Here are a few examples on this, on this slide. On the left, you see AI for melanoma detection. This is one of the most serious types of skin cancer. And on the right, you see AI being used to diagnose diabetic retinopathy, which is one of the leading causes of preventable blindness in the world. According to Johns Hopkins University, the COVID-19 pandemic has killed over 6.3 million people worldwide. One of the proven ways to reduce cases is by officially diagnosing someone with COVID-19. However, a key issue with the pandemic was that not everyone got access to resources such as swab tests and vaccines, which caused a lot of harm to underprivileged communities. Diagnosing COVID-19 via chest X-ray images has shown to be promising. However, there continues to be a lack of radiologists to analyze these scans, especially in undeveloped areas. For example, in India, the radiologist to patient ratio is one to 100,000. For the past few years, I've been working to address this problem. I developed COVID ML. COVID ML is a novel artificial intelligence based app for efficient diagnoses of COVID 19 and other lung related illnesses based on a chest x ray. Basically, what this concept aims to do is tries to use pre existing resources such as chest x ray machines, as it can take lengthy amounts of time for testing kits and vaccines to arrive in developing areas after a new illness has emerged. This type of technology can be very useful in areas where there is loss of patients and very few healthcare workers, as it can make the diagnosis process much more fast and efficient. On the right here, you see a demonstration of COVID ML. I'm basically giving the app an image, a chest x-ray, and it's giving a diagnostic prediction. In the future, I hope to expand to more specific illnesses, but as of right now, it can diagnose whether someone has COVID-19 a viral illness other than COVID-19, a bacterial illness, or is completely normal. So how exactly does COVID ML work? Well, there are many types of AI models, but in this case, a convolutional neural network was used. You can see an image of an uh, example of like how CNN kind of works um, over here. So here an input image is given, and in this case, it would be chest X-ray images. And throughout the various layers, the network is learning certain patterns that distinguish um, a certain um, certain parts of um, the, the x-ray that distinguish one illness from another. So it's learning like how, how what are the patterns that distinguish someone, an x-ray of someone who might have COVID-19 versus someone who might not have COVID-19 or someone who might have a virus other than COVID-19 or bacterial illness. And it trains, it trained on 3,924 pre-labeled chest x-rays. 
And by that time, it had learned a lot of patterns about this data. So then when new data was given, it was able to make accurate predictions. I then downloaded the AI model as a TensorFlow flight file and implemented it into a usable app. TensorFlow allows for on-device artificial intelligence to occur, which means there doesn't need to be any access to Wi-Fi or internet for these AI models. This is critical in situations where this could be deployed into rural settings because there might not always be access to stable Wi-Fi or internet in these sort of like rural or developing areas. So of course, there's also ethical concerns when it comes to implementing AI in healthcare. One of the problems is that um, AI can be regarded as sort of this black box and in a sense, there's no exact information regarding what exact patterns the AI is picking up to make the final prediction. So as I showed in the demonstration earlier, you saw that the app was taking an input image, an x-ray, and then giving an output as a diagnosis. But there was no information regarding what the algorithm was looking at in the image that helps make its final diagnosis or prediction. And this is critical that we address because we want to make sure that we understand how these algorithms are exactly working before we implement them into real time. A potential solution to address this is GradCam. So as you can see um, with the cat image over here, it is highlighting the part of the image that contributed the most to the final output. This helps people understand how this algorithm is working. And this helps us broaden our knowledge on what this algorithm is using to make our final diagnosis or output. Another problem with um, AI and healthcare or ethical concern that we must address is AI algorithms being biased due to the lack of diverse data and this is why we must enable diverse teams and also make sure that we have diverse data sets so that AI algorithms can be robust and work over diverse populations and not just for those who can afford it. Here are the key takeaways from this presentation. The lack of access to healthcare is a critical issue that needs to be addressed. And this is a global health issue. As I mentioned earlier, it impacts more than half the world. So we must immediately work to address this. Artificial ability to address this issue because it has the artificial intelligence is really good when it comes to provide insights, which makes it very useful in the area of healthcare. COVID ML is a proof of concept that AI can make healthcare more accessible and efficient, but it is also important that we address the ethical concerns that come with it. These are the references I used in my presentation. I would just like to thank the Global Healthcare Leadership Conference team for giving me this opportunity to speak, my mentors and everyone who just listened to my presentation. If you have any questions or comments, please feel to email me at via doll06 at gmail.com as I'd be more than happy to respond. Thank you all so much for listening to my presentation and I hope you have a wonderful day.